talking sort of within the broad rubric of looking at uh, Musk's acquisition of Twitter and how that may play out and how it may affect you personally. I was myself struck with, like, you know, I think the tweet that you were banned for was sort of like commenting on Elliot Page. How do we prioritise compassion, kindness, love? And can't this basic palette of principles well, prevent us from getting into conflict around these ideas? Well, it isn't obvious to me that love can be um, reduced to compassion at all, because there, for a variety of reasons. First of all, I think love is a multidimensional virtue, and there's many other virtues than compassion. Think about it this way, Russell. The, imagine that the purest expression of compassion is the love of a mother for a true infant. We could really think about that as true compassion, 100% compassion. And the reason for that is that if you have an infant from birth to, say, six months old, nothing the infant does is ever to be questioned. The proper response to the infant is whatever the cause of their distress, you immediately prioritize its reduction. But then as the child starts to develop, and as soon as it becomes capable of its own voluntary movement, as soon as it becomes ambulatory, its nervous system starts to change, of course. But then there are other elements that have to be introduced into the relationship to make it a relationship of proper love. And some of that's judgment, which is often considered antithetical to compassion. And some of it's encouragement. And encouragement has a fair bit of judgment in it. Because when you're encouraging someone, you're not exactly being compassionate for who they are. You're doing what you can to facilitate who they could be. And what you're doing constantly when you're encouraging someone is prioritizing who they could be over who they are. And that's an element of judgment. And that judgment, you might say, if you're not thinking about it precisely from the religious perspective, is your own ability to decide which parts of you should go. Then the question is, are you compassionate for who you are? Or are you compassionate for who you could be? And the second is just as important or maybe more important. And when that's applied to the self, I can see that the, the, the requirement for this judgment, the great success you've had in, you know, clean your room, stand up straight, these kind of edicts offered to young men who ever, or young people who require discipline, I can see the success of that. But Jordan, I feel that when it becomes an outward strike of like, this person should not have done this thing, this is the impact that these actions will have on the culture, this will lead to this kind of denigration, this will lead to decisions that are, in my view, palpably wrong. I, I feel that this is where we have to redress an imbalance around compassion. I feel that Elliot Page should be able to do whatever Elliot Page wants to do. And that my only role is to say, I recognize that I, I don't understand. And why would I understand? There are less obvious things that you could never understand about me. They're less evident and obvious. And I, for me, the basic principle of kindness and compassion is going to be my guide when dealing with Elliot Page and when posting something about Elliot Page. I do have recourse to the idea of what do I want Elliot Page to feel? Happy accepted. That's what I want Elliot Page to feel. You know, and if there are aspects of that I don't understand, then I'm willing to take the hit. When you think about your behavior on your, your YouTube channel, you're spending a lot of time in public criticism eh? and going after large corporations, going after those who are engaged in fascist collusion. And I think rightly so. I think that you're an extremely useful voice in that regard, and you're a critical voice. And, you know, you're a critical comedic voice, which is a good kind of critical voice and not exactly compassionate, right? Because you're also using creativity on the humor side to make your point and you're doing it in a playful way. And I think that playful criticism is the hallmark of the master critic. And I think the joker and the jester in that regard are master critics, but that's not compassion, right? That's a different virtue. And often it's very, very pointed. You do act as a social critic in many, many ways, and you do leave in it with comedy, and I think that's ex extraordinarily appropriate. It's part of what's given you such a broad voice, and that criticism is absolutely necessary. Now, let's speak about Elliot Page more specifically. So the first thing I'd like to bring up is the fact that in the UK, the Tavistock Clinic was recently closed, and that was the biggest clinic doing gender transformation surgery that operated in the British world. 1,000 of the 19,000 kids have now launched a lawsuit for medical malpractice. And when Elliot Page went online and showed off his or her new chest, she or he got 1.7 million Instagram likes. So then the question is, okay, compassion. Well, you know, I think Elliot Page stepped over the line from victim to perpetrator because 
when girls hit puberty, their negative emotion spikes and they develop bodily image problems because neurotic, um, uh, and that would be negative emotional experience for women is extremely tightly tied to body image. And so if you're a girl who is undergoing the hormonal changes that are going to elevate your negative emotion, which is what happens at puberty, you're going to be focused on body image. And if you're an unpopular girl and you're awkward socially, the probability that you're going to think something's wrong with your body is almost 100% if you're female. So I can see yeah. what makes you angry yeah. about it. It's your analysis and it's your opinion that it's a, a, that it's a powerful influencer and it's going to lead yeah. people to make decisions that are going to be detrimental to their lives. But the evident and palpable anger, I feel, diminishes your position because now anger is in the conversation. I think you offer a great deal that is valuable and necessary, but I feel beyond the value and necessity of honesty, authenticity and, and information that is underwritten by data and experience, I feel that it creates more opposition to approach a matter like yeah. this in the manner that you have done. What are we going to anchor ourselves to ultimately, Jordan, navigating this space? Are we like are we going to be participants in creating more and more ossified and oppositional camps? Or are we going to create cartilage between us so that we can move between the room that Jordan Peterson is in and a room that Elliot Page is in and say, look, I believe, I believe in love. And I know it's complicated. I think you're beautiful and full of love. I really believe in that. And then when I sort of hear people being dismissive of you, it upsets me. It upsets me. And I see how you arm them. I feel that you arm them by sort of, in their language, dead naming Elliot Page. And I feel like that's why would you do that? It isn't necessary. It isn't necessary. Of course, it's the, you know, the, the statistics you've cited about the Tavistock Clinic appear to speak for themselves. Is there a way that we can handle this that would be more akin to how we might imagine Christ would handle it? Otherwise, what's the point of Christianity? What's the point of Christianity if we're not going to embody Christ in our behavior? Look, everybody who's operating in the online space that we're operating is trying to get the tone right, right? And you do that in part by paying attention to the audience. And you, you do that by trying to see how people are responding and not in a way that's pandering, but in a way that's open and attentive. And it's a very difficult thing to get right. So the question you're asking is, well, when is anger appropriate? When is it not appropriate? When is it only inflammatory? That's a really hard question to answer, you know, to get that balance between judgment and encouraging acceptance right. I suppose part of the problem is we don't know exactly how emotions scale in an online environment, right? And definitely I found that even when I'm delivering very cutting material, as I just wrote an article for The Telegraph on the upcoming privation that Europe is going to be facing in the rest of the world in the winter. And I tried to read it as calmly as I possibly could, even though it's extremely cutting. And the calm delivery seems to alienate fewer people and bring people in more than an angry delivery without any shift in semantic content. The right principle is probably something like minimal necessary force in your personal interactions and minimal necessary emotion in your online behavior. But it's hard to know exactly what that means. And it's not as if I think I've done it perfectly. I mean, you move like this towards that central line. That